You know, it's been said we're becoming a nation of couch potatoes, and there's probably some truth to that, although it doesn't mean I want you to get up off the couch and leave. Because we have some stories tonight, as we often do, about people who are doing things, not just doing the jobs they get paid to do or taking on the responsibilities that they have to take on. We're talking about people who use the time that they have for themselves, and they've just decided not to sit back and watch the world go by. Will's on a, uh, a financial drive to raise money, and uh, the amount of money that he's going to need is extensive. <clears throat> we don't have enough money. It's 9 a.m. on a Wednesday morning. This hangar is filled with airplanes in various stages of disrepair and pilots and mechanics who are being briefed on the status of business. That aircraft uh, does a lot of work in the Caribbean. We have another 401 just like this one. Their business uh, is rebuilding planes there. and flying them into isolated parts of the world. Rice from Guatemala. They don't do this for money. No one is paying them for their time or talents. It's not a job requirement. They do it because they want to, and it needs to be done. The volunteer training session is... This is Wings of Hope, and for the last 42 years, using rebuilt airplanes, they have provided medical assistance to communities in remote areas all over the world. Any questions? Wings of Hope was founded in 1962 by four St. Louis businessmen, and they had heard about this nurse in the Turkana Desert area of Africa who used a small little fabric-covered airplane to go out and take care of women's health and children's health. And the fabric airplane was falling apart. So they heard about this and said, well, let's get our metal airplane. You know, that's not that hard to come by. It's 1962. Every airplane that we've seen is metal. So sure enough, they started a Wings of Hope charity and, and raised the money and got our metal airplane and sent it to Africa. And that was our beginning. In the process of doing that, they were contacted at that time by telegram and, and letter from groups all over the world that had concentrations of poor people. Their mission is to save lives, improve the quality of life, and bring hope to people around the world using aviation. Wings of Hope has provided medical and educational assistance throughout North, Central, and South America, Asia, Africa, even the islands in the Caribbean. But it all begins here at their hangar near the Spirit of St. Louis Airport. It really is a commitment, and we have uh, people who uh, have made that commitment, and clearly the reason that they're here is helping the people in the world that need our help. Uh, and we have mechanics, we have administrative people, uh, we have executives who have come out, uh, and uh, it's just amazing the time that they put in and, and the help that they offer to all the people that are out there in this world that need our help. Wings of Hope is the largest aviation charity in the world. Their success is credited to their volunteers, providing more than 100,000 man hours of work each year, making them one of the largest volunteer groups in the United States. In fact, all of the doctors and nurses who accompany these planes are volunteers as well. And these humanitarians have their work cut out for them. They rebuild these planes almost from scratch, Many of them have been involved in crashes, and some suffer from severe neglect. This plane was submerged in a muddy field for the last 23 years, but Wings of Hope has given it a new life and a new purpose. When these guys are finished with it, this plane will service the Terra Humera tribe in Mexico. Airplanes get to be very personal things, and the owner just didn't want to give it up, despite the fact it was never going to fly And you could still look at it and think... Well, we can, we can sure. turn it into something. We can turn this into something. First off, it was free, you know, and the labor. Uh, Harold's in there working away at the cockpit. His labor's free. Harold doesn't get paid anything. So slowly we'll rebuild this plane into something that'll be very useful. Uh, this is a Cherokee 6. It's a great aircraft. It has a front cargo door as well as a back cargo door that's very wide. You can carry a stretcher or a wheelchair in here. Uh, plus, it'll carry uh, 1,200 pounds of supplies at the same time. Vincent's uh, Executive Director Doug Clement says when Wings of Hope goes to another country, they do not go as Americans, they go as humanitarians. The key to actually getting the chance to help 
is discovering what the indigenous people of a region need. He says Wings of Hope is there to understand them, not the other way around. We're one of the very few charities that get approved to go anywhere. We've been asked to go to Afghanistan. We've been asked to go to Iran and places like that. The United Nations talks with us on somewhat of a regular basis. We are very, very fortunate in the fact that because of our core philosophies, non-political, non-sectarian or religious in any capacity, we get invited places other groups don't get to go. How long does it take to build up the trust between Winds of Hope and the Tribal Village? Eight, because eight I guess months to a year and a half. You want to be very confident yeah. before That's you right. send anybody in there because right. your pilot, your, your medical Everybody. team, sure. absolutely. is I that mean, danger if somebody's not comfortable absolutely. with it? It takes a long time, every bit of eight months to a year and a half, to build up a rapport that's at the level now where you can send other volunteers in to start doing medical work. And the first medical work, of course, is just assessment. You know, what kind of, who's been dying of what, how old were they, what diseases did they have, what medical care does the government allow us to do? You can't just do any medical care. You can't take somebody that's got high blood pressure out of the jungle and take them and get that high blood pressure treated because they're not going to be able to get it treated on a permanent basis. Currently, there are more than 140 Wings of Hope planes in service around the world, and one of them operates here in St. Louis. Since August, Wings of Hope has offered medical air transport to the needy of this region. How many people does this hold? Uh, it holds six people, uh, but one of the things that we do is we take some of the seats out. Uh, it's not a remote area in St. Louis, but there's a lot of marginalized poor people right here in St. Louis. They can't get to, to St. Jude's Hospital, for example, can't get to Shriners in Cincinnati, can't get to a Houston Medical Center or something like that because they're broke. They don't have any money for the transportation. Many of the mechanics spent years working for McDonnell Douglas and Boeing, but their legacy won't be found in sophisticated high-performance jets, rather in a very different kind of plane with a very different kind of purpose.